Hey everyone, this is Ryan and for today's video we're going to look at building a loading screen into our Canvas app. Now there are a couple of reasons why we would want a loading screen in our app. Uh, the first one is we might have some processes on the on start of our app or perhaps when a button is selected and we want to inform the user that something is going on in the system. Uh, the other reason why is when we're loading or perhaps when that button is selected we don't want the user to perhaps you know, move around the app, uh, interrupt the current process. So this allows us to put up a barrier in the app to say, hey, something is going on and just wait for it to be completed. So this only requires three components added to the app and it's very simple to do. Okay, so we're now in our app and the first component that we're gonna add is a rectangle. So for the rectangle, it's our backdrop for the loading screen. And by default, the rectangle here, as you can see, it's, it's a solid blue color. Um, and we want to change this around so it's semi-transparent, uh, probably use a neutral color. Uh, so it's um, you know, a bit more appealing than, than this. So let's do that. Um, and if we go to the fill on the left here, and if we go and enter in a, the color for gray, so it's 128, 128, 128. And you will see that it's a fully, you know, solid color at this point. So what we can do is for the, the last value here is change around the transparency for this. So I would recommend like a, a 0.5 or something like that. Um, so as you can see, you can see the components in the background, but it's noticeable to the user that, hey, nothing can be selected. So once this is done, we can add a spinner. So I recommend that you go and download run from uh, you know, if you just do a search on Google, there's a lot of free websites out there that allow you to generate custom spinners and download them for free. So for this one, uh, we created, um, you know, it's a pretty simple spinner here uh, that looks like this. And the last component that we're going to add is a label. So the label will provide us a bit more context to what's going on um, for the user. So we're just going to say loading in this case. Okay, so if we go to here and we're going to say it's semi-bold, we're going to add, you know, probably uh, upsize the, the text here, and then we're going to center it. So you'll see that it's now loading. So this is great and all, but the user, you don't want this to always appear. So what we can do is actually group these components together and we're going to call it group loading screen. And what we will want to do is only display it when we need it to be shown. So for example, uh, we can display it when uh, the on start is happening or perhaps when a button is being selected. So let's do that. Let's go to our on start. And what we will do here is we'll set a global variable and we're going to say display loading screen and we're going to set it to true and then down here at the bottom we will say okay let's actually hide it once the on start function has stopped so so if we go to the on start and we run it oh sorry one thing that we'll have to do is actually change around the group here to say, hey, when should we be visible? So this is where currently it's set to true, and we could change around this group to say it's only visible when the display loading screen is set to true. So if we click the run on start, you will see that it's actually not displaying. It's because we don't have much components right now or law processing that's going on with our on start. So what we can do is I've built a Power Automate flow that just, you know, takes a few seconds to return a result. So what we're going to do is we're going to run our flow. So I create a mock delay flow. And let's see this run. So we're going to click run on start and you'll see how it runs in the background there. 
So run on start. I can't, you know, user wouldn't be able to click anything. Nothing could be done. Now, what we can do here is actually change it around so that we perhaps provide more context to the user. So you might have a lot of things going on uh, when your app is loading. Uh, for, for example, let's say we're retrieving contacts or let's say loading images or you know something like that. So what we could do is actually set a loading screen label. So what the loading screen label will do is instead of loading dot, 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 we can actually show, hey, we're retrieving contacts or you know we're loading the images. So let's do that right now. So we're retrieving contacts in this case. And what we will do is we will copy this, paste, and what we'll do is retrieving images. So we're going to run our mock delay twice just because we want to show probably about like a four to six second delay. Okay. So if we go back to our app and we click the run on start, you will see that it still says loading. So we have not changed our label around to the uh, updated global variable. So to do that, we'll go to our label, we'll go to the text here, and then we'll switch it around to the loading screen label. So now if we click the run on start, it will now say retrieving contacts. And once that's done, it'll say retrieving images, then it's complete. So it's pretty simple from a on start perspective of you know, having a loading screen appear and providing context to the user of what's going on. But let's actually do this with a button. So you can even apply it to a button here. So we copied this one that for save and we're going to rename it to run. And then here, what we will do is just copy some of our, um, you know, functions here from our on start. And what we will do is put it in the run. Okay. So what we will have here is let's say we are updating contact and updating image. And then here we will set this to true. So we'll display the loading screen when the button first is selected and we have mock processes down below. And with each process that's happening, we are updating the loading screen label to say updating contact and then updating image. Once our processes are done, then we will hide the loading screen. So if we run our app here, click run and you'll see it's updating contact and then updating image and then it hides at this point. So as you can see, um, you know, loading screens are quite simple to do. They only require three components and then you just have to decide when they should appear in your app. Um, I recommend with the on start, especially if you have a lot of, you know, variables being set, looking up to a lot of tables or loading your collections and also any buttons that require a lot of, uh, you know, processes being run. So if you're doing any sort of validations or anything like that, it's good to run it on a button just to avoid the user from, you know, leaving the screen perhaps, or, you know, clicking another button and perhaps interrupting that process. So that's it for this video. Hopefully um, you're able to easily implement the loading screen on your end.